we've got uh, Abayami Fawemi here with us. He's an education and human resources consultant. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, starting off with this ASUS strike, it's not the first, not the second, something. It may not even be the last. But if you look back and look at the previous uh, strikes they've been backed upon and the kind of results they get, and now that they've come to this one, do you think that in the long run, this does benefit the system that they're able to ask for a certain thing, call attention, and get some attention to the plight of education in the country? Um, uh, thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate that. Happy holidays, Nigerians. Uh, I think it's very unfortunate that we have ASU using strike as the most potent weapon to discuss their issues. Please, let's all separate a couple of things. ASU does not represent the educational sector. ASU represents teachers in universities, not even every stakeholder in the university system. So every time we lump ASU strike with education, I think we are doing, we're doing committing a great error. Because more often than not, what most of the ASU strikes have been about has been agreement that ASU signed with government, essentially about tertiary education, to be more precise about university education. And if we check our history, Nigeria did not have ASU a couple of years back. ASU is not part of our history. But I mean, the schools but, cannot run without ASU. The school does not need ASU to run. What will shock you is that the most high-paying schools in Nigeria do not have ASU. So the question we need to ask ourselves is that what has been the value? Before ASU, there was no strike. So my question is, and I think it's very also irresponsible of government to have signed an agreement with ASU and not honor it. I also think government should have done what it should have done. But I think the greater thing is to ask that basic question. What exactly is the problem with the Nigerian universal system? ASU keeps talking about the needs assessment that was done and talked about finance. The worst error in all of this discussion is that there is a presentation of the greatest recommendation of that report as being financing. The greatest recommendation of that report is governance of the university system, not financing. Because we have gotten more money to universities, but the results have not been obvious. I'll give you an instance. 1956, 1957, um, till 1979, 1980, the bulk of spending on education in Nigeria was in the primary sector. The bulk of spending in Nigeria was the primary sector. Between the time ASU was started and now, the bulk of spending has gone to the university sector. Nigeria is one of those countries that spends more up than down. Is that fraud? I would not call it fraud. I think it's just because of the fact that ASU had been able to um, rest too effective with the government. Unfortunately, the Nigerian Union of Teachers and the other representatives of the other levels of government. So what has happened is, while we have given more money to the Nigerian university system, 10.5 students in primary school are not in school. Nigeria has the greatest out of school children in the world. And that is what is the bigger problem. My problem is not with the Nigerian university education yeah, system. That 10.5 million, is it as a result of funding or a combination of factors, negligence, security challenges, lack of funds for people to send their children to school? It, it, like you said, a couple of factors. Funding is not a problem. You see, what, what research has shown in education is that education funding is more about how money is spent, not how much is spent. What has been found, there's a world annual ranking of university, um, is either, I mean, three standard one world of educational system. You either talk about the PISA or you talk about the TIMSS, it's global. Okay. What has been found is that the top universe, the top ranking educational institutions, countries in the world, are not spending the same amount of students. Some spend quite a lot, some spend quite a little. But the result is that the ones that come in the top 10, there's no consistency in terms of spend. So it's not about spend, it's about how money is spent. So if, for example... But, but they spend far much more than we spend, either on students or the schools. Shibali, let's ask the question. And one of the things I try to tell explain to Nigerians is that the budget for the Federal Ministry of Education is meant from the budget for education. We must never confuse ourselves and repeat that. The budget of the Federal Ministry of Education is what goes into federally owned institutions. It's totally separate from what goes to education. Let me give you a piece of it. Let me tell you something that will surprise you. You know the Nigerian police force? Do you know the Nigerian police force has excess of 80, prim 80 schools? Do you know the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics? Nigerian Bureau of Statistics has three trading schools. If those monies don't come to the Ministry of Education, <coughs> there's a maritime academy of Nigeria. It's not the Ministry of Education. Nigeria has over 30 colleges of education, there's over 30 <coughs> colleges of Agric. That money does not come to Federal Ministry of Education, it goes to Federal Ministry of Agric. All your science research institutes, the money is in the Ministry of Science and Technology. You'll be shocked that agencies like aviation, your sector, 
there is a school of journalism. That money is not a Ministry of Education. The biggest piece of real estate in terms of educational institutions for the media sector is a school down the road in Ikeja, GRA. It's owned by Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. I don't know whether it's born one of the two of them. It's also education, but the money is in the Ministry of Information. So, so is, is it the ministries are not releasing the monies to the schools? You see, I think one of the problems we have is that we need to have education as an issue, not Ministry of Education as an issue. There is a need for an oversight around all the educational institutions to be sure that we are spending money correctly. I'll give you an instance. Let's go to Ibadan. So in Ibadan, there is a federal government owned University of Ibadan, right? If you go down the road in Ibadan, you go towards Ojo Moniya, there is a Nigerian Institute of Social and Economic Research, government owned. Virtually every research that is done in that school is done in UI. They actually share a boundary, but it's two separate institutions. Two different heads, two different registrars, two different bosses. We're paying money twice. If you go further the road, there's a funding of a government called IIT, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Is there. If you go to the other side of the Bidon, go towards uh, the part you are going towards, uh, Monia, and those, you see research institutes. Ibadan has upwards of eight federal government owned educational institutions. But are they, would those ones be classified as uh, tertiary institutions or part of ASU or part of the university system? That's why we need that coherence. Okay. Some of them are under the Federal Ministry of Education. Some of them are under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Well, well, of, so let, the question let's is... Let's that a bit okay. when we come back from the break. Okay. Join us again.